Thanks everyone for coming. Um, I think we're ready to get started here. Um, let the last, last couple people trickle in. My name is Eric Berg. I'm here with Pacific Coast Land Design. We're a landscape architecture firm here in Ventura. Can everyone hear okay, first thing? I'm really, I like to talk without a mic, but I think we'll keep it going. I know it's working with the cameras in the back, so um, let me know if you can't hear anything. Uh, as, as we go through this. Um, I'm a principal with Pacific Coast Land Design here. We're here tonight to talk about the Ventura River Trail Improvement Project. I'm here joined by our team, Brianne and Tori, um, and we're gonna do a little presentation. We also are here representing, this is a City of Ventura project, so uh, they didn't wanna do an introduction, but I'm gonna have some people wave here, I'll kind of mention, but um, we have the park staff, Stacy, Emily, here as well as public work. This is kind of an interesting project. It crosses both jurisdictions. So um, technically under public works, Derek Towers and the project manager Alejandro Puga are here as well. And I know there's other city employees here tonight as well. But th so thank you for coming. This is an exciting project. Uh, we've been working on this one for a little while and it's starting to get, gain st steam to hopefully be constructed. This is moving really fast. So just go over a quick agenda here tonight. We're gonna do a brief introduction, we kind of already did it, of we kind of call this project the VERTIP, Ventura River Trail Improvement Project. Go over a little bit of the ba project background, where we're currently at on the project, then we'll kind of explain, we're, we have some activities here when we're done that we want everyone to participate in, and then also talk about uh, timeline next steps and open it up for Q&A. When we're done, we'll go and do the uh, voting activities. As I mentioned, a little bit about the project team, City of Ventura project, the City of Ventura applied for a grant to fund the work that's happening. This, the grant is administered by Caltrans. Caltrans Trans is a heavy part of this because it's adjacent to the 33. On our side, myself, our team here, we're also working with the civil engineering firm, Kimley Horn. They're kind of closely with us uh, working here. They're not here tonight. And it, we also have this project has included an extensive part of uh, survey as well as geotechnical to understand. Um, turns out this, the, what we're dealing with is an old railroad right away. And it goes back to the 1900s and it hasn't really been figured out. So survey has actually been one of the most complicated parts to the process yet, because the property lines have never really been figured out ever since they were first set in the late 19, late eight, or 1800s, early 1900s. So a little bit about us, we're a Ventura um, landscape architecture firm. Our office is right downtown. We're in the El Hardin Courtyard building. Um, we've been operating in Ventura since 1984. Uh, next year will be our 40 year anniversary. We really capitalize, this is what we love to do. We love to do public improvement projects where we get to work with the communities that we live in, especially here in Ventura. I, I was fortunate enough to, to work on Kellogg Park uh, four year, five years ago. It's my, one of my pride and joys here on the west side. I've been working on the Westview Village. We've been working on the Westview Village housing apartment. I've been working on it for nine years. Um, it's going on forever. We do a lot of work locally. We just, uh, we just opened Arroyo Verde Inclusive Playground a couple, right at, a year ago now. Um, uh, and are happy to be working on this project as well as some others around the city. You know, we really love these opportunities to reach out to the community and, and build relationships as well as focus on improvements that are gonna benefit you, the residents of the city of Ventura. Um, over the last couple of years, we've focused heavily on helping cities fund the projects they're interested in. And this is a really interesting study where we help the city of Ventura not only identify a funding opportunity, but a specific project that would target that funding opportunity. And that's what we're here to talk about a little bit tonight. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Brianne. She's gonna give an a introduction to kind of about the project background and the grant. Hi everybody. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the, the echoey in here. I'm gonna stand over here so you guys can see everything. So the funding source is Clean California. It's a grant administered by Caltrans. Um, the opportunity became available in late 2021. So as Eric mentioned, we helped identify the grant opportunity and then worked with the city um, to find a project that would fit the grant. Project awards were up to $5 million and um, we'll get more into the award, but the River Trail was awarded 4.99 Eight million, yeah, it was right up there. Um, and something um, special about this grant is it gives preference to projects that have a large impact on underserved communities. So example projects that were eligible for the grant program is community park space, 
transit centers, park and ride facilities, underpasses, overpasses. It's about um, beautification and community connection points. Um, also some grants, not ours, not this project, um, also focused on educational campaigns, so more like programming, not necessarily in the built environment. So these are just some of the eligible activities and expenses. So, you know, when we, so we, as Eric mentioned, we worked on the uh, grant application part of this. So there's a lot of things that we've heard through public feedback. Well, why isn't this included? Or what about this thing? But with a grant application, especially when they are funding 100% of a project, you have to go by their guidelines. So things that are eligible in this grant, grant program are things like shade trees, um, bioretention, fencing, um, public art, uh, potentially like uh, signage. These are all things that are included in our project. And there are some things that are on here that aren't in our project, but really public space amenities. So again, the grant application gave preference to projects that have a large impact potential in underserved communities. And if you met that threshold, there was a 0% funding match from the entity that you were applying for. So because this project is on the west side, there was a 0% funding match for the city. So in other words, 100% free money. I guess no money comes free, but... <laughs> So um, a little bit about why and how we chose the project. So we, we know that there are upgrades needed throughout the city, but again, because of the, the needs-based uh, quota of this grant application for the 0% match, we really um, zoomed in on the west side, coming up with some potential projects. We started with, so this is actually a map of um, census data looking at income by family. And so as you see, the area that's most concentrated from a need standpoint is on the west side. Unfortunately, um, as you can see, like area 13.02 is eligible, but we actually had to be eligible in all of the surrounding tracks as well. And so it looks like that area is eligible, but it wasn't for this grant. So we actually, we ended up using a different metric to get this project qualified, and that is the public schools here on the avenue, Sheridan Way and E.P. Foster for um, their free and reduced lunch program. And I say that, um, or I, I'm highlighting that tonight because a lot of the public space amenities are going to benefit the whole city as a recreation asset, um, but specifically we wanted to look at how do these assets uh, aid the underserved community. So there's things like lighting that will be added to the trail, which will help people get um, to, from home to school, to jobs. Um, it's, it's not just about it being a recreation asset, but also for the community that lives here. So again, we're bringing benefits to both the west side and the city as a whole and improving this critical, critical connection between neighborhoods and um, recreation, jobs, uh, fresh food, those types of assets that are so important to all of us. So we have some goals for the project. There's five goals and these tie into the program, um, but these are things that the project will um, succeed in after construction. So number one is reducing waste and debris on the trail. Number two is beautifying and improving the trail. Three, enhancing public health, cultural connection and community placemaking. Number four, so these are some of the things I've already mentioned, advancing equity for the west side. And five, we're gonna provide shade, reduce urban heat island effect, and use through the use of low and native and low water plants. So I'm gonna pass it back over to Eric. He's gonna talk about the history of the, of the trail itself and details about the project. Yeah, so many of you might be aware this, this uh, the river trail for most of its stretch occupied an old railroad right away. Um, that railroad was constructed in the late 1890s. Um, it was granted from the railroad authority to the county that then deeded that land to the city in the late 90s to construct the Ventura River Trail that we all know today. The Ventura River Trail is actually one of kind of three trail sections. The nomenclature kind of goes back and forth, but um, Kathy Bremer here with the uh, Friends of the Ventura River, also a City of Ventura Parks and Recreation Commissioner, um, has been in integral in kind of like the linking of the whole trail. Many of you might be familiar, part of it starts down by the, uh, essentially by the estuary and comes up to Main Street. Then there's the portion that we're going to be talking about, which is the City of Ventura portion, 
I'll get to a map here in a second, that goes up to Ojai, and then there's the Ojai portion of the trail that picks up about Foster Park. Um, so it's kind of a long, we're working at about 1.8 miles of that stretch. Um, so another thing to note here is that it was constructed late 90s, but since then, very little has been done. There's little maintenance here or there, a little paving maintenance. Um, the, the trail paving that you ride on today is actually almost 30 years old. Um, and so that's a very long time for trail paving to, have, to last. It's actually in great shape, particularly because it's on an old railroad bed. It's a great structural soil to build paving on. Um, but we also know it's at the end of the life and the city doesn't have a funding source to repair trails. They have funding sources to repair your roads, that sort of stuff, gas tax sort of stuff, but, the, but bike trails don't fit into that. So finding funding opportunities to repair that, especially when we know it's getting towards the end of the life, seemed like a clear uh, opportunity to use um, in this grant. So again, I mentioned what we're gonna talk tonight and you're gonna see maps, I'll try to mention. Um, this is Main Street, the Main Street Bridge. The Ventura River's on the left-hand side of this map and the 33. So we're really talking about a stretch of the trail that starts at what we call Rex Dubbers at the south end. It's kind of a hidden connection, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Goes by, we're right here. This is West Park Community Center, Sheridan Way Elementary. Goes through, follows the 33, crosses Stanley, goes up north. This is Sycamore Village Housing, and then goes through what we call, a, it's actually a flood wall on the Ventura River, and that also um, is technically the city limits. Then it enters county jurisdiction. The city actually maintains it through county jurisdiction, but for our limits, where it's about 1.8 miles from the south end to the north end across Stanley. Um, you can see those radius around the schools. Or there, this, is a, uh, this little radius here represents a quarter mile around Sheridan Way and E.P. Foster. Brianne mentioned that those two schools are actually the reason that we got this money. Because of their underserved community status, their free and reduced school, lunch school program, that qualified this improvement to be a 0% match. As Brianne said, free money, we all know that's not really true, but the city didn't have to put or match donation for this, these grants, and it's because of those two schools. Because of that, you also see a lot of improvements. So the trail is within that, but you also see these kind of highlighted intersections. I mentioned the, the intersection of Rex Dubbers down here. And kind of, I'm sure many of you who live on the west side know, it's not an easy trail to find how to get onto it. And so one of the things this grant is, is focusing on is wayfinding. And so we're gonna actually add wayfinding network through the west side that'll help residents and other people find and access locations to get on the trail. Uh, another thing I wanna talk a little bit right now, there is a lot of stuff going on around the, the bike trail right now. We happen to be kind of peripherally involved in many projects. And so this is a good chance to kind of mention, this is, this is one of many projects that are going on to kind of beautify or enhance the west side. I mentioned West Park here, just to the south, the West Park Skate Park also received a state $2 million grant and is undergoing, the city is trying to contract their first ever design build contractor as we speak. Um, hopefully we'll be going through design and construction shortly after this project opens at West Park. So that's a, a really critical asset. Additionally, the housing authority, which operates um, I mentioned Westview Village here. This is a redevelopment project, received a large grant that is funding improvements throughout the west side, some of which is planting trees. And there's actually a, a project that will plant, um, I think it's like 200 or 250 trees along a portion of the, of the river trail starting this winter within, within a couple of months. Um, there was another project that Christy, the, Christy Weir, former council member, Christy Weir and Ventura Tree Alliance founder helped with the city fund to plant 65 trees down here at the southern section. So there's actually 65 small trees that were just planted down there. Um, I feel like there's more, I'm forgetting there's, oh yeah, the, the city has a new connection at Sheridan Way. Again, can't see it. Yep. Um, that is slated to start construction soon. I know there's some negotiating happening with that one, but uh, it's actually fenced off right now. So I talked a little bit about the project improvements. I mentioned wayfinding. We mentioned that list of what the grant can fund. This is kind of a list of the, what, what was included in the grant application. So kind of in order of magnitude, repaving, some fen new fencing along stretches. Brand mentioned lighting, trash receptacles, Access improvements, a big one right here at West Park. If ever you try to get to the trail here at West Park, many of you know it's a really steep, you can't even barely ride a bike down it, you might crash into a fence. 
this is a place where we're trying to provide new access. Right here, right outside, there's a new bath, a restroom that was uh, installed a couple of years ago. That would be a new ac trail access location. So West Park could kind of serve almost as a little park and ride um, for people to access the trail from. Uh, urban greening, this, this project will also include more tree planting in other areas, as well as some stormwater runoff benefits in a few areas. Public art, right now we've highlighted a significant opportunity you're gonna see in a couple of the renderings coming up. Um, and then wayfinding. These are some of the key kind of locations. Many of the improvements, the paving, the lighting, the fencing are kind of throughout, but these are kind of some of the more localized. Quick question. Budget, more like how much, yeah, budget and continuity. So these are continuity pieces um, and they also cost the most, so, yep. The, I'll, I'll show you in just a second, because you'll see it, but you'll, if you've ridden the trail, you'll see it and you'll recognize it. It's a little hard to explain. So this is kind of, this is what was in the grant included um, as the amenities. So you're gonna see a lot of the, that last list there included here. So this is what it looks like today. This is a section of the trail that actually isn't on the railroad. It actually veers off of the railroad. This is actually an easement through private property that the city negotiated when they constructed the trail. The railroad actually is to the east of this where it's hard to explain, but it goes right behind Westview Village. The old railroad right away does. And it's the primary access for those industrial lots that's there now, which is why the city traded access. It was the landowners got access to their property. The city got to use the western half of their property for the trail, essentially was the trade. So this is a section here. These are some of the proposed improvements. So kind of highlighting, there's your light. So we're thinking the current proposal is for solar powered lighting, which is one of the ways we can actually provide lighting for this long of a stretch. If we had to provide the electrical improvements to hardwire this, we wouldn't be able to go very far. We'd be able to get, you know, 20, the price per pole of doing a solar light allows us to go a lot farther and actually provide that benefit. And solar technology is making huge strides. Um, and so we have a, a, a manufacturer already identified for that fe um, feature. Um, the fencing, uh, it, particularly on the east side against this industrial is a, a prime opportunity for repair. One of the challenges of this project is the left side of this image, which is the Caltrans right away. And so there's a lot of negotiations going in that for, so whether or not we can replace the fencing on the west side is still kind of we're working out that out. The fencing is access control primarily for the private owners on the other side of it. So it's, uh, and for Caltrans itself, you won't find a Caltrans right away without a fence. Um, they're always all fenced off, especially the 33 is considered an expressway, which is their highest level of security, so they put fencing along it. So these are all existing fences that are in need of repair. Oh, that, I, that is a very valid uh, uh, statement, and that's one of the things with, with the voting that we want to hear you say, for sure, because it's, you're, you're correct, it is a very expensive thing. And, and that's one of the things, the proposal is for non-chain link fencing, architectural fencing that will look more attractive. So but it's also more expensive. I have something about the fencing. Um, fencing is also important, especially along the 33, because a lot of people try to pass the 33. So something we do as landscape architects is we're also always thinking about the health and safety of the public. And so having some type of barrier there keeps both the drivers safe and for people that might be trying to cross. Um, you know, people go very fast on this highway, and so we're, we're trying to keep everybody safe. Um, the, some of the other access imp or improvements you can see in this image, this rendering, and keep in mind, this is all proposed. So n none of this is finalized yet. We're here tonight to kind of hear your ideas. Um, are, is this what we're calling kind of a respite node? Areas with trash receptacles, um, shade around it, because there's long stretches of this trail, especially if you're walking, where there is no shade. Um, this is also an area where one of those other projects we were talking about is gonna add more trees in this area. That's the thinking. This particular, from a dark sky compliance standpoint, this particular lighting is downcast, so it will not be downcast. The operational um, compliance, there's many different ways to set this lighting so it can reduce in intensity during hours. Um, that's something we're still working out as far as the program programmatic um, understand the concern there. The next one here, this is actually here, right? This is West Park. So I mentioned that little uh, restroom that's on the right-hand side. This is a, a double stall restroom that was installed right before COVID. Um, but here's where you can see that really steep access, not accessible at all. Right now, there's not an accessible access point at West Park to get to the trail. So the proposed improvements include a, a ramp that would get up to the trail. And again, the configuration of that is still something we're still designing. 
but provides access up that steep slope instead of the super steep slope that you provide there now. And there you see the lighting as well, um, as well as some kind of trailhead amenities here at West Park that would become kind of that park and ride location for people who might be coming for the first time to understand where they're at and where they can go on the trail. Not yet, but there is another one being constructed soon at Sheridan Way, just to the north of us, right here. So what's the end, what's, do you know the end of the street that it's coming off of? What is, it's, well, yeah, Sheridan, Sheridan Way, and there's the east-west street, but it's just right to the north here. So it's about, it'll pop out onto the trail right about 200 yards north of where this image hits the trail. There's also another one at Ramona. That's a, that's a great point. At the end of Ramona by the Riverside Apartments, there was a new, it's really hidden. And that is a, it's a beautiful connection point, but that is one of the things that the, the wayfinding program is gonna hopefully help identify because I don't think very many people know that connection exists. Yep, there is no access. I'm not arguing that there shouldn't be. It is a very hard thing to do because of the land ownership agreements in place right now. Um, it's all private land with the, essentially behind, uh, between the trail and the housing um, or where people live and can access. And so providing that access point is extremely challenging. It's not impossible. Yeah. So the, the, particularly going back to this image right here, um, the right hand side, this is private property um, owned and the, for example, Westview Village, um, the, the ends of the streets of um, Vince, Barnett, uh, Flint, Warner are all just, you know, a quarter of a mile to the east of this, but it's separated by large tracts of private property, um, all the way from that Ramona all the way to Stanley. And so crossing that private property, especially when the, the city already has an agreement to cross that private property, the trail currently has an agreement to cross that private property. It gets complicated. Um, it's not impossible, but at this point in time, it's not something that can happen within the scope or time frame of this budget. Another thing I didn't mention about this project is Caltrans rushed this one out. This project has to be in the ground, ground by the end of 2024. In the middle of 2024, June of 2024. 2024, which is an ex extremely, extremely fast time frame. And so within the scope and budget of this project, it's not something we can consider for those reasons. The, pri the negotiation time between private, um, private land ownership would take way longer than that. And so not saying it's not something the city isn't aware of or hasn't thought of. I know Derek has spent long hours on this very specific years on that very specific issue. It's just tricky. The connection is at Prospect, so that's the next street over, Prospect, where the new uh, pedestrian or bike connection will be. And then also, there's a map up front, so if anybody has any questions about uh, all the idiosyncrasies of, of this uh, complication of the easements and the ownership, um, please come find me and I can, I can help with some of those questions too. Yep. Um, and Quick question, oh, one, one more question in the back. Well, I, I have a timeline at the end, perfect. I'll answer your question at the end, because there's a, there's a perfect timeline. So um, the question about public art, um, and where, where's the northern limit of the trail? This is actually the northern limit of our improvements. If you've ridden the trail, you recognize this structure. This is actually a flood wall on the Ventura levee. Um, and so it's clearly being painted as we speak and repainted and repainted. It's a prime opportunity as a welcome to Ventura location. Thought it would be a great opportunity to provide a mural. It's not the, again, con conceived of. Um, we're working out that the Ventura County Flood Protection owns the rights to the wall. However, the city is actually maintaining the graffiti that it's on it now. So we're working on the agreements between the two parties for this to be a public art component. I should have mentioned that we're identifying locations. This our team will not be installing the public art. That'll be an actual open call. Thanks, Emily. Open call for artists that will go out to actually do the murals. So um, we're identifying opportunities and then working with the city to do that open call for public art. Illustrative purpose only. It won't necessarily look anything like this. It can look in any way you want it to. I think this is a fantastic opportunity for that. Yes. I would say that that's the prime opportunity is the public art component. Um, most of it's heavy infrastructure right now and replacement of infrastructure, so, yeah. But I, that's a fantastic point. 
I think we're working with the city on the call for artists, and that's the opportunity to in integrate that so that if, if it needs to be represented in the art, um, would love to hear that as a comment tonight so that if it needs to be encrypted in the, in the call for artists, that's something that the city can then put out so it is incorporated in that portion of the, the project. Mention your timeline. So this project is happening extremely fast. We only applied for this grant in early January, late January. Um, it was awarded in March. Here we are, I know it's December, a year has gone by, but it takes a long time to get this point. We're still in early design through the end of this year into next year. We will be back at, um, we're hoping the West Side Community Council in March, as well as the Parks and Rec Commission, presenting the design progress at that point. Um, March through June, we're gonna be doing some permitting. There is a Caltrans portion of this process. That's what we're trying to, that takes a long time. So we're trying to get into that process right now as we speak so we can get churning through the, the process of that with hopefully um, construction a little less than a year from now going into 2024. Um, I hope that answered your question. So Tori's gonna mention or give a little guide of the activity for when we're all done here. Yeah, thank you. I think it's working. Uh, thank you all for participating in the first activity. We've got uh, a couple more coming up um, that I'm gonna go through. So I think there's enough of us that you can go to either side and actually please go to either side because we have some people that were really eager and already started it. So we wanna make them as even as possible. I'm gonna go over the themes board first. We came up with three general themes, maybe for um, amenities, colors, um, seating, things like that along the park. So the first one is this modern colorful theme, um, bold colors, bold accents. The second one is taking um, a little bit of our history and maybe incorporating the railroad back into it with uh, Corten steel, maybe railroad ties, wood, um, other types of steel, and uh, bring that history back in. And then our third option is really playing into the uh, river theme and going with a natural riparian theme with um, wood, rocks, um, maybe some play features uh, like mushrooms or other natural uh, growing elements. Our second board has uh, two options or uh, two separate voting elements on it. The first is on-trail wayfinding and the kiosks. So we really wanted to leave these as kind of like a blank template so that you know you could go wild with your imagination and also just uh, not, not really box us in at this point in the design and go with uh, general ideas and just uh, the materiality of it. Um, or I guess maybe more the structure of it than the material. So we have a uh, strong identity signage. We have some hanging signage. I believe the first one is kind of a riff off of the uh, Santa Paula Rail Trail. If you guys have been there, it's very similar. And then the third option is just clean and simple uh, vertical signage. Again, made out of material. We're not sure yet. It's just going off of the general uh, shape and aesthetic of it. This is the second part of the board. Uh, we have interpretive elements along the trail. This is potentially, again, just vote for one of, you know, your favorite one of these. Uh, sensory activity, what can you see, what can you hear, what can you smell, so that maybe every time you access the trail, you get a new experience. Ecological signage, I feel like, as you mentioned, the Chumash, this is also a great opportunity to maybe bring in uh, historical context or cultural context, so I'm going to go with ecological, cultural, um, and historical signage uh, for this option. Pollinator habitats, so really uh, creating a special space for bees, bugs, birds, um, and people to interact with them along the trail with uh, when they might not normally, um, you know, really be to the forefront of our of our site when we're accessing the trail. And then the last one, we have a interactive activity. Maybe this is a memory game or. Um, scientific names of plants and the image on the other side. Um, again, open to your imagination, but interactive so that you um, can really uh, play with it and once again, maybe have a different experience every time you access the trail. This one is probably our, our most tricky one and I see people have, were really excited to vote. Once again, this is a great place to share your opinion. So if fencing really isn't important to you, then do not pick up a fence sticker. If your top three are um, waste receptacles, public art, and rest areas. We'll go ahead and hand you those three stickers and you can correlate them to one, two, three. This is kind of also gonna inform um, us along the way if we run into budget constraints or something else and there's a clear identifier within the community of what's really important to you and what's not so important to you. So once again, just to give you an idea of what this looks like, we have uh, a public art sticker, maybe that's your number one. So you can find number one, 
the public art row. Maybe your second most desired amenity is a rest area. So you put the rest area sticker number two, and maybe your third most desired amenity is waste receptacles. So that can go in the column for waste receptacles number three. I think everyone here has taken the survey. Thanks, Terry. Um, and I'll just add to, we've got post-it notes and there will be some of us facilitators at each table, but if you have any comments about any of these voting categories or if you have ideas for additional things that aren't on the boards, please write them down, stick them on the boards, stick them on the table. Uh, we're here to get your feedback. Um, so are there any more questions or comments about the activities tonight? You can go first. Yeah, so I'm gonna repeat your comment just so everybody that couldn't hear could hear. So her comment, and tell me if I got it all. Um, her comment was uh, perhaps we pull back on the fencing portion so we can include things that like uh, trees and shrubs and things that could mask some of the ugly fencing um, to allow for more budget for other things. Is that a synopsis? Okay, um, so we won't be able to put fencing Everywhere, as Eric mentioned, it's very complicated with all the property ownership and easement issues. Um, so we're already on that wavelength. And fortunately, trees and shrubs, things like that, cost way less than fencing. So when we worked on the grant application with the city, we actually identified everywhere we possibly could plant trees or shrubs that wasn't already being planted as some of those other projects that Eric mentioned. So. Great comments, I think we're on the same page, um, but please write them down and add them to the board tonight. But thank, thank you for your comment. Yes. Um, great comment. Uh, the number one improvement as part of this project is the replacement of the whole 1.8 miles. So it'll be what's called replaced in kind. So it'll be the same trail alignment, it'll be asphalt, um, but it'll be, as far as riding on it, a brand new trail. So. We want this, this trail to have a long longevity, at a long lifetime, so all people using it for recreation or um, to and from home and, and places here on the west side can use it for the next 30, 40 years, so. Our goal is to have it last just, our goal is to have it last just as long as it lasted this time, right? Yes, yes. The, and the majority of the trail is there now with the exception of a couple of the bends which have slight canters, but the, essentially the trail you see there now is designed to be replaced in kind. Um. Okay, um, over there. Definitely, um, Kathy's group, uh, friends of the, okay, I wanna make sure I wasn't confusing it with the Santa Clara. Friends of the Ventura River has done a beautiful master plan and we've been working with Kathy since we started the grant application. Um, things like trees, things like signage to let people know, um, picking the right light fixtures, all of those things are being considered. Um, also, uh, treating stormwater areas where water is hitting the trail and going out to the river. We're trying to do as much as we can on the trail, but. Though, yes, those are all things that have been considered and thank you for your question. Oh yeah, and Tori's got something to add. Um, I also just wanna add in that unfortunately, um, we are very boxed in with Caltrans um, and pretty much as soon as that highway was formed and that fence was built, that was that. that, was that. And um, that is what we're working with still today and that's a major constraint of ours. Um, and unfortunately, that is not within our jurisdiction to do anything, and that's basically bilaterally, as you saw from the maps, just like bisecting um, between the community and the other side of the 33 is fencing, four, four lane highway, more fencing, um, and that's unfortunate, but that we have that's something we have to work around. The other thing I'll add on that is this, this project is not removing any existing vegetation. Um, so there's lots of large eucalyptus along this, lots of large, a heavy dense stand in the Sycamore Village area right now that while I haven't stood, sat, stu, stood there and, and watched, I'm sure bird migratory patterns are well in those areas. Um, I can do it. I do live here on the west side and there's a lot of um, birds and I see owls all the time. I just live up from Sycamore Village. So uh, just saying that 
that's a definite. Um, and then also for folks that are interested in um, getting more access to the Ventura River, Kathy, Kathy, will you raise your hand, not to put you on the spot. Kathy is a great um, advocate for that. And there is a lot of um, local activism to um, open up access to the trail or to the river. Unfortunately, this project can't um, succeed in that for all the reasons that Tori just mentioned um, with Caltrans, uh, but we're doing our best to at least connect the wildlife corridors and tell the story of the river. Do you want to take some? Sure. Sorry. Uh, yeah, right. um, great question. Um, the plan is to plant not directly next to the tra trail, which is one of the things. So, but any plant that or tree that gets planted within, we'll say, I think it's five or even seven feet, we would install a root barrier along the edge of the trail, which will help roots go down. Um, fortunately, this stretch of the trail, again, the majority of it was constructed on the old railroad bed. Wherever that happened, the trail's in great shape. No roots are going through it. Where it deviates off the railroad bed, that's where a couple of those problem areas actually happen, and there are eucalyptus roots. So this project will repair those through the repair of the, pra the paving, um, doing root pruning on those locations, but then also installing root barriers to prevent future root intrusion, which is about the best you can do. We're just so excited about this project and have so much information to share. Um, one of the things that we did early on in the grant application and also working with some of these other projects here along the bike trail is very thorough um, tree research. As we say in our world, right tree or right plant, right place. So those things like tree roots, but also there's so many other factors being so close to the ocean, the fact that these trees won't have irrigation, um, the soil type, fire, these are all things that we've researched to pick the right trees so we can feel confident in that. They, not, they won't all live, we know that, so we're, we're also trying to plant enough trees so we'll get ample shade, but not um, affect the integrity of the trail. Yes. Um, however, however the, I will say that list is short, and one of the other things we're, we're keenly aware of is native today isn't native 50 years from now. Climate is changing. Um, we're in a world where we're actually working with arborists who are specifying trees that are native to areas south of us, trying to kind of preemptively adapt for tree migration mitigation as the climate changes. So what, what may not be native to here, it might be native to here 100 years from now because the climate's changing. We're trying to play those, you know, other things like root invasiveness, messiness, you know, trying to keep trees that keep from dropping litter. There's so many factors. We're trying to pick the right tree, but it's really hard. That list whittles way down real quick. I'll add to that our native trees are considered to be highly flammable. That's because in nature, this area is more prone to burning. And so there's a lot of native plants we can't plant because of local fire restrictions. So we try our best, um, but there's a lot of constraints around that. So. It's unfortunately what we're up against in 2022. I will say I have time for maybe one or two more questions, but we need to get to the activities just to be cognizant of everyone's time. Um, we welcome all of your questions. We'll, we'll be here for the next hour. Does anyone have any questions specifically about the activities or anything as a follow-up? Yes. That's a great comment. We haven't determined that yet, um, but... I think it should be, especially with the proximity to the west side. Thank you. Kathy? Can I just give you the mic so, so they can get it on tap? Everybody can hear you. Okay. Um, in 2014, this trail was designated all the way from the estuary to Ojai as a national recreation trail. It's available online at American Trails. Um, I want to be sure that we're consistent with the signage, that the name of the entire trail is the Ventura River Parkway Trail, and we have, it has two segments, the Ventura River Trail, Ojai Valley Trail, those two segments form the entire length of the trail. And I just want to be sure the county has put in some really nice signage, and I want to be sure we're kind of consistent with that. And then the wayfinding really needs to be in Spanish as well, I do agree. 
Thank you. Great, great comment, Kathy. We appreciate that. Just a couple follow-ups. The city has put up a website for the Ventura River Trail Improvements Project. Um, and so we actually have flyers off at the front. There's a survey that's going up tonight after the meeting. Um, so if you have any... So that's, that's actually the QR code. If any of you guys have a smartphone, you can actually get your phone out and it'll zoom in on that QR code. But we also have it on flyers at the front as, long, as well as with the website that you can access the website. So that has a lot of the information we went over tonight and additional information. Um, at the front, if you didn't already, please sign in and give us your email address so then we can follow up with uh, future project updates. And yeah, if you know anybody that um, wasn't able to come tonight that would like to give feedback, please share those flyers at the front. We've got plenty to share. And then Tori's got a comment and then we'll vote. Uh, I just want to mention that the survey is in Spanish as well. So. Kathy has English and Spanish Ventura River Parkway. She's going to put them at, we're going to put them at the front if you're interested about the whole trail and, and the beautiful maps. Wonderful. All right, so with that, I think we're going to go ahead and break, and we can vote. We're here to answer questions. You can head to either side. They're exactly the same. Both sides are. So thank you all for coming, and please keep sharing the, the word.